as a consultant, a coach, or any kind of service provider, maybe you're a lawyer, maybe you are a therapist, are you selling your time for money? How are you actually managing your time? In this video, I want to give you some tips, some very straightforward tips about how to better manage your time and to shift the mindset that you are potentially in about, like I said, selling your time for money. If we haven't met before, my name is Gwyneth and I empower fabulous women just like you to radiate presence and passion so that you take ownership of your expertise, so that you build your brand, so that you are creating wealth from a place of integrity. So I've made a few notes here. You have to forgive me if I keep looking down, but this is a big topic and it's important. I don't want to miss anything else. So managing your time, yes, of course, there's a lot of practical stuff, but it really is a mindset issue. And I was reminded about this when I was speaking to a client recently who's moving from being a consultant type person within a large organization to being a consultant as somebody who's self-employed. And one of the things they spoke about was, I don't want to go from one hamster wheel to another hamster wheel. So it's really, really important that you understand when it comes to your time and charging for your time as a business owner, it is you who is in charge. Now, I know that might sound fairly obvious, but if you have been working in an organization for a very long time or in, in a business, it can be um, quite challenging to take ownership of you being responsible for your time. Regardless of whether you are a therapist, a solicitor, lawyer, um, a service-based professional, a coach, consultant, you are not selling your time for money. Never, 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 never say to somebody, an, an hour of my time costs this or or um, two hours of my time cost this or your coaching packages are made up of four hours coaching or six hours coaching or, or eight hour hours coaching. That's not what you are selling. You are at some level selling some sort of a transformation. You are helping those that you work with to feel differently about themselves. You are selling outcomes. So Get away from, you know, people who say, how much do you charge an hour? Well, in between times, I don't even do that anymore. I say, there, that's not what we talk about. We have uh, packages. Um, there are different packages that you can choose that include a specific amount of time, but we don't ever talk about selling hours for money. You are selling outcomes, not time. The second thing um, that you can do that, that I found very, very useful is to um, when somebody wants to talk to you, provide them with a, a very short document, you know, a few questions. You will know the questions that you need to ask because they will be potentially a, a questions that you ask people time and again when they come to you. What do you expect to get out of our time together? What uh, specific type of help are you looking for? Um, if we were to work together, how would that look for you? Very, very basic, maybe four or five questions. Get them to respond to a, a very brief questionnaire and assessment because I can promise you something, you will get rid of the time wasters immediately. Those people who say, can I just pick your brains? Before we do that, before we have a conversation, I'd like to know a little bit more. But don't have a conversation with them because, again, you're giving away your time, potentially your expertise. If they're serious about wanting to work with you, if they're serious about valuing your time and to help you value your time, give them a small um, assessment. Now, that can be very easily done if you are using, for example, a an online calendar such as um, Acuity, which... Um, allows you to, when somebody books a, a call, they have to fill out these questions. If they don't fill out the questions, their appointment isn't confirmed. So I know that sounds a little bit, you know, a roundabout, but even if you're just sending an email to somebody um, to say, yeah, sure, absolutely love to talk, but I'd like to just know a little bit more about what you want before we have that conversation. That will also help you to manage your mindset and manage your time around your business much more efficiently. Now I've mentioned, I've mentioned a little bit the, the may I just have a pick your brain, um, brains conversations. 
As somebody who worked in international organizations for more than um, 20 years, almost 25 years, and from being a child, someone who always wanted to help others make the world a better place, I found it very difficult as well in the beginning saying no to people. Oh, could we just have a cup of coffee? How would you do this? How would you do that? Until I took ownership of my expertise, of my business, of my time, taking responsibility of my knowledge, acknowledging my gift. And I want you to do exactly the same. Some people think that just because you are helping others, you should do it for free. We get a lot of this growing up, you know, uh, it's not nice to charge for if you are helping somebody, particularly in international organizations or, or charity, the not-for-profit sector. There's a lot of this stuff, you know, it's not enough, uh, it's not nice to charge or it's not nice to ask for a salary increase if you're working with, with a charity or, or something. You shouldn't do that because you're helping others. It doesn't work. It, it absolutely doesn't work because at some point you feel as though other people are taking you for granted. You end up resenting them. You end up resenting the work you're doing and you feel bad about yourself. It's not a great place to be. Again, this is a mindset shift um, about your time, about your self-worth. So when those conversations come along about could, could I just pick your brains, again, give them four or five questions in a document or, or automated somehow before we have before we talk before i agree to talk to you i'd like to know a little bit more about what it is you expect from our conversation because some people will try to keep it very informal but this is your business we're talking about this is your professional expertise we're talking about so keep it on a professional level even if it is a friend there it can be very very difficult as well but just because they're their friend doesn't give them the right to pick your brains and then go off and use all, all the knowledge that potentially, you know, it's also unfair to the people who are paying for your expertise. So again, ask them those questions. And you can also say something along the lines of, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to have a chat. Um, I'd love to um, share with you the options that you have for us working together and then make it very clear that any conversation you have is not going to be giving away your free uh, expertise rather it is going to be about you sharing with them how you could work together and how they could benefit if they were prepared to make the investment the time and the financial um, investment in themselves to work with you um, so those are three things that that um, you know managing your time mindset managing your money mindset as a part of that it, it's all um, put in in together and it, it does require a big shift it does require discipline it does require you having these systems and processes in place it does require you practicing having these conversations in the mirror until you feel comfortable saying to somebody i'd love to have a chat um, you know clearly you want to know this and this and during our conversation i'll be sharing with you the options of us working together there's actually just one thing one more thing i've got um down here so a, a bonus not just three things here's a fourth thing um and that is that sometimes you will get a client who thinks that just because they are paying you they are at your uh, you are at their beck and call now regardless of the type of service provider you are um, or a consultant you are not a contractor or an employee okay just because somebody is paying you for your services does not mean that you can be available to them 24 7. Um, this is particularly important if you are working as a consultant with a larger business make sure that from a time perspective you're very clear about your availability to those people you're very clear about um, how quickly you will respond to emails i always say to everybody i promise i will um respond within 24 hours unless it's a weekend so put those things in in place as well when people are investing in themselves when they are paying you for your expertise 
it doesn't make you an employee. It doesn't mean they can tell you what they want you to do. It doesn't work like that. This is about you helping them facilitating their success, their outcome. So three things plus one, don't sell your time, sell outcomes. Um, provide short assessments or questionnaires, very short questionnaires if somebody um, you know says can, can we have a chat um, to, to just basically weed out the time wasters because if then they send the questionnaire back to you you can decide yes or no and stay right away from, from those people who just want to pick your brains yes you want to help people yes you want to make the world a better place many of us do but it can't always be at your expense um, and so those conversations they have to be about I'd love to have a chat um, and I'll be happy to share the options that you have for us working together and number four when you're being paid as an expert when you're being paid as an, a, a consultant it doesn't give other people the right to push you around and tell you uh, you know, treat you as though you were an employee. It's a completely different ball game. I hope that those uh, things helped. If you've liked this um, video, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment and or share. In between times and until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay fabulous, loads of love and bye for now.